Hello, hello, hello everybody! Welcome to a new episode of Tower Defense Tutorial. This episode we're gonna learn about inheritance. I think that's that's it. Yeah? Let's go. What is inheritance? Well it does mean what it says. If you've never done it before or never heard of it, it's basically inheriting classes from classes. It's as simple as a child inheriting some features from his parents. So let's say we have a couple of scripts, right? And we have an example here. We got the tower 1, 2, and 3. They do have several functionalities that defers to each one of them. For example, tower 1, it gives coin. So it has a coin flip on top of it with animation. Well, this one, he attacks by throwing some ninchunk. While the mask, he just works as a tank, so he just stands still. Overall, all of them must have some common functionalities. Let's go into the scripts to see what are the functionalities. All right, so right away, looking at those three scripts in here, we will see that all of them, they have health, cost, all the way. Health and cost. And looking at the functionalities, that everybody has their own different one, like shooting. This one has gain coins. But at the end, we'll see that they all have lose health and die. Looking at this UI question, what if I want to create more than three towers? If I have 12 towers, 20 towers, so it will become really, really difficult to modify those towers. Let's say I want to change something that's really common between all towers. So I have to do the work 10, 12 times, depending on how many scripts you have, which is not a good practice. One of the ways that we can do in here is inheritance and what that means is we extract all the common functionalities and fields and put them in one script and let all these towers inherit from it. So that will make sure for us that in case we want to change let's say the health attribute or we want to add something that all the towers should have or let's we want to modify one of the functions in here we can do it only once and it will apply to all the towers. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a script and let's call it tower. Let's open it up. Here we go. So, this is going to be simple as an empty mono behavior script, but we we're going to start taking out the common functionalities and fields and put it in that tower script. As I said, we found out that health and cost as a field are common between all of them. So, we go ahead, go public, integer, health public integer cost. Now let's look at the methods. We see here we have start, shoot, shoot, lose, die. Well on this one we have start, interval, blah blah blah, lose, die. We, we have start, lose, die. So the common ones are lose and die. You sh we shouldn't use start because each start has a different functionality in it. So what we will do is we're gonna take this methods these methods I mean and put them in here since we have moved all these things what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the common functionalities and fields from the towers one by one let's remove them don't worry it's, we're not gonna lose anything you will see in a second yep let's remove these two methods let's remove these two methods this method became empty this one is unused so technically this tower is just empty so we remove the methods and the properties and the fields that we have then we need to tell it inherit from tower script and the way to do it is we're gonna go up and see the name of the class and it has this thing next to it it's called mono behavior this is the place where you put the class that you wanna inherit from so since this one is taken from mono behavior we wanna change it to tower and if we go to tower, we'll see that tower is taken from mono behavior. So we will take from tower that takes from mono behavior, which is the perfect cycle. Let's do the same thing in this tower. And the same thing in this tower as well. And let's save. Go back. If you go back to your prefabs, tower 1, 2, 3, you will realize that nothing actually happened. Because we haven't changed anything, we just shifted the data from place to a place. You still have the health, cost, income, all this stuff. So you see the health cost is all over the prefabs, which is exactly what we need. 
This is the first part of the inheritance, which is getting the data across from it. the parent or the base to the inheritees. I don't know if that's a good word or even a word. The second thing is we need to learn about overriding. And one of the important usage in inheritance is overriding. It helps us in bringing across methods from the base class to the child class and then we can either override it or we can add to it more logic. And seeing we have only two methods in here, let's add a new one. Just for example, because it's easier to test on uh, start, I guess, yeah, start rather than lose and die because I don't think we're calling these ones at the moment so I'm gonna use start. I wrote start and it auto completed to be this way but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this method able to be overridden and to do this we have to write virtual void start and then as soon as we write virtual void it's gonna tell us that virtual methods cannot be private it has to be public or protected. What's the difference is protected will make this method similar to private that only people inside will be able to change it. It's not going to be public and uh, public as I mentioned is going to make sure that we can call this method from outside. I'm going to keep this protected and write the logic here. So let's go ahead and write base tower. This will fire whenever we spawn a tower and I'm going to go and look at the tower mask and see that we have nothing in here so it's gonna fire the start of the parent or the base tower it should write this alright let's see if I click on the tower mask and spawn it I will have this debug in here but if I click on this coin person it's not gonna spawn that one neither this green guy so first of all I have no currency here we go if I spawn him there's no base tower and why that? Let's go ahead and look. In the tower pink, we see that we have our own start method. And you will see there's a, a green line underneath and it says tower pink start hides inherited member tower start. To make the current member override that implementation, add the override keyword, otherwise add the new keyword. So what it's telling us is in the base script, which is tower, we have already got a virtual start method. If you want to use the logic inside this method, make sure to write override before it. So let's jump back to the tower mask. Let's see what that, that means. If we write protected override void start, as soon as I click enter, it will auto complete and write this thing in here. So what this means is I'm overriding the start method of the base. But then you'll say, like, what is this base start? It's as simple as going one level up, which is the tower, and calling the start. So with this makes sure that we have called the base logic. So if I go back now, technically I'm going to be able to see the same message if I click on the mask. Here we go, which is perfect. So we have this thing here. We got the base tower. Let's say I want to do some logic before that one so what I need what I can do is debug that log before and let's say I want to do something afterwards like a uh, like a like an effects or something but anyway I'm just gonna put a debug statement so looking at this what's gonna do is it's gonna run its own logic in here and then call the base logic and then run its own logic afterwards again keeping notice that we're working on the mask tower only for now. If I click on this mask tower, put it in, you'll see that it's gonna call before, base and after, which is perfect. Because we don't always need to override the methods. And a lot of times we need to use that functionalities in the method and then do stuff before or after. Now let's go back to the tower pink and tower ninja. Seeing this here, it says that we have to use the override, which is not a problem uh, because in the base we have no realistic logic. It, it's just a debug statement. So we can just override it. What we can do here is go override, but we have to write protected. 
So writing this protected override will make that notification go away and it will not really do oh, sorry protected override this will not remove anything or add anything it's just gonna say that override the base functionality but do my own functionality if you want to call the base functionality as I said as we saw before we just have to go base that start and why start because we're calling the start method if you have for an increase you're gonna call increase you have for lose health you're gonna go lose health so that said all we can do is look at here make debug.log and call pink let's go here call it ninja and the tower mask I'm gonna remove the base and call it mask let's go in the game now we have uh, implemented the virtual start to all our towers so we will see the name of each tower when we spawn it here we go we got pink if we click mask and we got ninja brilliant let's go back and uh, look at the other methods looking at these methods they're not virtual so let's make sure that they are virtual it's as simple as adding virtual before it and as I said each virtual method has to be either protected or public for the die we're gonna keep it protected going back here we are not using any of those methods which is fine because we need to use this logic on each of those ones without adding anything extra so the last thing that I want to do is I want to improve the functionality of the lose health we see that we're losing health only by one point which is good but not very dynamic so let's add here something called amount and instead of writing minus minus which is decreasing one value only we write minus equals amount so what this does it's equivalent of health equals health minus amount but this is an easier way of writing it I think that's all and it's a really powerful thing to use in programming because you don't want to do the same job over and over again you can put it all in one place and then reuse it over time that being said we have reached at the end of our episode and I hope you liked it if you did hit the like and subscribe also hit the comments below for any questions or join our discord channel where we can help you there what we've done today is gonna be used in our next video which is gonna integrate the enemy logic attack so, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.